Hey everybody, welcome back to Moto with Ellery, and in this episode we're going to be looking at painting illumination. Uh, now this is going to be a bit more of a uh, kind of concept and uh, an, an idea-based tutorial as opposed to a step-by-step -step one, uh, but the idea here is to give you all the pieces that you would need to be able to customize this in you know, the way that you specifically need it for any individual project. And since the idea of this is kind of organic illumination creation, um, that's, I think, very important. So here we have our uh, wireless uh, stock headphones. Uh, it's the stock headphones with the wire cut off just for easier posing uh, in the specific Moto with Ellery uh, branded version. These will be available on Amazon probably uh, never, but that's okay. Uh, they'll work well for our purposes here, and they're sitting on a nice uh, dark brushed aluminum stand looking perfectly boring, uh, and that's because there is just blanket basic illumination. So we have uh, just the initial background gradient that comes in that turns on when you boot up Moto's rendering engine, and that's it. The uh, the direct light that comes in with uh, the, the stock setup is turned off, and, and that's really all it is. So we get nice kind of even illumination, but the problem with this is, one, it lacks any style, uh, and two, it, it really doesn't give us a good idea of what's going on with the surfaces. So with the, uh, with the stand, you kind of get the idea that it looks metallic. Okay, great. But with the headphones, um, it's really hard to tell what's going on with the materials. We can't really tell if this is um, powder coat or if it's uh, shiny or if it's... Um, you know, matte or have anything like you can't tell because the the illumination is just so even and smooth. So there are a few different ways you can set up illumination, and obviously we're not going to go through everything in this video. If you want to go and look at direct illumination, you can look at a previous episode we've got um, up on that, and you can have a look at that uh, to set up using direct lighting. Uh, but in this one, we're going to look at painting illumination. So I'm going to hop right over here. Let's start just by hopping over to the layout tab, uh, so we can have a look at the scene setup that I've got here. So basically what's going on here is that we have a really basic backdrop and here let me go ahead and change this to our default um, so we've got just this basic scene here right um, it's a pedestal with a backdrop uh, as a side note if uh, if you go into item mode and select this little item here there is a wall height control and this will allow you to uh, change the height of the wall depending on your camera. So, you know, that way if you have your camera here, let's go over here to the camera view. You know, if I've got the camera down here, I don't really need the, the wall to be very high. But if I put it up to about say a little over 30 percent or 30 uh, 31 looks like it actually crops out the full background and that will allow you to have lighting um, c spilling over the backdrop uh, without having anything weird going on we can also look at having the backdrop eliminated entirely but uh, you know if you want control over that you know if I happen to move my camera down I don't want to see the edge of the wall there so what I can do is just adjust the height upwards so um, also what you'll see here is you'll see uh, some of the initial painting I was doing some kind of spatter testing, uh, which isn't on the file anymore, but uh, it will still show up here until we start to repaint. Uh, so just a side note, this is kind of an artifact of uh, the OpenGL. Just a side note there. Um, so let's see, I'm going to go, let's get a nice uh, framed right here, and I'm going to put the wall... Let's go to 41, so it's just out, out of view there. Okay, so now let's hop back over to the perspective view. And then what you see here around this is... Um uh, basically just a ball and this ball is going to represent our environment and what this will allow us to do is to paint onto the surface of this ball and it will give us a, a good quick idea of where light is coming from and you can do it either um, you know, facing inward like this which is good if you you know happen to be looking you know through the object and you want to see what's going to be casting light from behind um, or you can just have this selected and tap the F key and it will invert it and now you'll be painting on the outside uh, that way you know you can be looking basically through the sphere and you know I've got this kind of soft box here that I did on an initial test and that's going to be coming from you know if you're looking through it towards the object that's going to be coming from behind us through um, onto the scene. Okay, and let's go ahead and select this item here and we'll see if we go to the 
mesh item, you'll see that the render is set to no. That way I can have it visible here in the scene. I can uh, use it as a proxy to paint on. It's going to make it much easier to, to place my lighting and illumination, um, but then it will never show up at render time. And that way you don't have to constantly hide or show it. Um, just setting render to no in the mesh settings here, mesh properties, will um, allow you to see it in OpenGL, but not have it render um, you know, at render time. Okay, so a couple of steps that we need to be able to set this up, and I wanted to leave it kind of partially set up so you could pretty quickly get going, but at the same time, uh, you know, get a full understanding of this. I have um, an Enviro paint material, which is what's attached to the sphere, and this is just a basic material. Um, actually, you could even have this set to traditional. Um, also, you could... Um, you can do whatever you want with diffuse. It really doesn't matter because you're not going to see this. Like I said, this is just your proxy item. So basically I like to make it as simple as possible. Um, it's So it's got zero specular, zero for Nell. Um, I do have 50% transparent amount set just so that you can see through it in OpenGL. And that doesn't really seem to slow OpenGL down either. And really that's it. That's all we've got going on. Uh, you don't have to use uh, luminous uh, textures or anything like that because uh, all we're doing is we want to see where the paint is coming from um, when we apply that to the environment. And we're going to apply that to the environment in real time. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this painted light, which is um, a new image. And what you'd want to do is, so we'll choose add layer, image map, and I'm going to choose a new image. And when you create this new image, and let's go here to episode 21. And um, I would just put it here, let's just put it here, just to say, let's call this light paint and we click save and you want to make sure that you're using before you click save you want to use an exr format um, because or an hdr format um, i'm going to use exr um, float 32 so this is a high dynamic range image and that's going to be important because we want to be able to have that dynamic range uh, to be able to paint illumination not just painting a texture uh, and we click save and then um, and I'm actually going to cancel this here since I've already got it in there. Uh, you can set your resolution however you want. Um, setting high resolution will be good because it will give you uh, more detail that you can paint in. However, uh, remember that it's also going to take up more memory. So just something to, to keep in mind. Um, and you want to check that your format is set to. You can choose RGB uh, because you really don't need the alpha. And really, that's all you need. So after that, you go ahead and click OK. I'm going to click Cancel. And so that's what I have here, this painted light image. And I need this to also go into my environment. So what I'm going to do is right click. And you can duplicate or instance this. It's really not going to matter uh, because you, uh, you're you going to be painting on the image. And even if it's duplicated, not instanced, the paint that you apply apply is applying to the image, not to uh, the specific layer. One note is if you do use instances, make sure that uh, you pay attention because if you change uh, from UV map to spherical projection, which we're going to do in a second, um, that you keep uh, a UV map on this. So uh, this image that's on here, if we look at it and we go to our texture locator, uh, you'll see that it is set to a UV map. And if you don't have a, an image set to UV map, you can't paint on it. So just a side note here, if you start to paint and nothing happens, um, usually nine out of 10 times, the culprit is that the projection type is set to spherical or something like that, uh, which is also why you can't take this image by itself and just drop it into your environments. Uh, and let's see. Oops, didn't quite get in there. So let's take this and put it here in my environment lighting. Um, and you see we'll automatically change to environment color. And then you have to go to the texture locator and we'll change it from uh, UV map to spherical. All right. Um, and now you can't paint on this uh, because, well, first of all, you can't paint on an environment because the environment is not a concrete item. It's the environment. Uh, and then second of all, you can't paint on anything that isn't attached to a UV map. As I said before, I just want to reiterate that because that's a, a common stumbling block with this kind of a process. Um, it's happened to me more than once where I start to paint, nothing happens. Oops, got to go over here and check this and uh, make sure that your item that you're painting on is set to a UV map. All right, and once you have that set up, you're actually ready to paint. And what I'm gonna to do to make my painting job easier is I'm gonna go ahead and press F8 uh, to bring up my preview render here. And I'm gonna make this nice and small because really all I'm looking for here is a, you know, a simple preview. This doesn't have to be, um, you know, the greatest uh, resolution because all I need to do is see how my lighting is going. So let's go ahead and click play. And at first it's gonna come out um, 
you know, looking like this because this has uh, some default paint on it. So let's just right click this and I'm going to click reload and I'll say yes. And now you'll see that everything goes to black. All right. And this is a good way to know that you can um, you can always wipe the slate clean to do a quick uh, kind of restart of your project as you're painting. You can do a little bit of experimentation uh, just to see how you like stuff and then quickly right click on the image and choose reload. And if you haven't saved it, it's just going to go back to the initial black image. All right. So um, all right. So what I want to do here is I just want to do a real quick look at this um, because really once you have the procedure down, it's really up to the project that you're working on so uh, getting super specific really doesn't uh, doesn't benefit us much so I'm gonna go here and let's hop over now to the paint tab actually and I'm gonna go from the perspective view just so that I can um, get a little bit better view here one thing is you may want to make sure that the camera is visible you know press the O key go to visibility and make sure the cameras are visible that way you can see kind of where the camera is pointed and that will help as you get started and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start I kind of want some uh, uh, some light coming not quite a rim light but coming from a bit back here so let's get back to this angle go to the paint tools I'm just gonna grab an airbrush and I'm gonna set the mode to add and this is gonna be important because you can only paint um, color at a hundred percent but if you or the opacity rather at a hundred percent but if you add more and more and more color so here let's go ahead and let me get like a little bit of a warm color right there um right there uh now if i paint this let's go ahead and just get a brush here and i don't have to make this very big because this is going to project outward to the environment and be actually a fairly large light here at this size but if i just go ahead and click here and paint um, we'll see that we start to get some illumination in our scene, but it's very, very faint. Um, let's go over to the shader tree. Do make sure that you have your uh, painted light um, image selected as you paint, because that's another thing that will make it so that you don't get any paint showing up. And so now I'm going to go in here, and I'm with this set to add, I'm going to click and paint a little bit more. And as soon as I release, you'll see that it will start to redraw here. And let's add a little bit more. And what I'm doing is I'm making this light just hotter in the center. And I'm going to make it a little smaller, a little smaller, a little smaller. So I give it kind of a very hot core. And now I can see I like the overall kind of size of the light, uh, but it needs more intensity. So I'm going to just make a nice bigger brush. And I'm just going to do kind of single clicks or maybe a click and a little bit of a drag. This can be a little bit slow because it's also trying to, uh, to calculate your illumination while it does it. So just a side note. Um, there we go. But now you can see I'm starting to get uh, some real illumination. Now, uh, if you remember when we were talking about area lights in a previous episode, um, a big part of area lights isn't just the intensity, but it's also the size. So something to keep in mind as you're creating uh, something like this is that if it's not getting bright enough, uh, you can also make it larger. So let's go ahead and just click here. And I'm just going to add a couple of clicks. And since this um, brush has a fall off on it, it's automatically going to be um, brighter in the center. Let's go with something maybe a little bit more like that. Okay, so now we're starting to get some nice uh, little bit of illumination coming from this side. It's highlighting uh, you know, the headphones themselves, and now we can actually start to see a bit of the characteristics of the material. And that's uh, the big difference between this and just the, the basic lighting that we had. All right, so now I'm going to move over to the other side here, uh, kind of off to the right side of the camera, and I'm going to make a little bit of a fill light. So I'm going to go and choose... A little bit cooler color and for this one I'm going to decrease the opacity now remember you can still just layer on because you're using the add mode you can layer this on and on and on but um, if you want to do subtle lighting changes it's a good idea to start with a lower opacity and then you can build up light as you go so with just a single click you can see now I'm getting a bit of fill here and maybe that's not quite enough so let's make it a little smaller and click in the center and I'm just gonna build this up you know maybe I want a fairly hot spot in the center but I don't want a huge amount of light coming from this. I just want it to be pretty basic. Maybe here in the very middle, I'll click and drag a little bit. You can see that spot gets brighter, even in OpenGL, but then as you release, you'll see that it allows more illumination within the scene. All right, great. And so let's move back here and I'm gonna create one more image and I wanna show one more thing that you can do here. Uh, and this becomes very useful as you're painting and that's using image ink. So uh, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna turn on image ink 
and I'm going to set my color all the way up to white uh, because remember when you're using image ink, uh, you're painting through the image. So any color that you have is going to tint the image, which you can use to your advantage uh, if you need to, but uh, in this case, I don't need it. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose, I've got a little series of uh, light images and these are EXR files and these actually come from off the page real quickly here. These come from hdrlabs.com. You can go to the Smart IBL archive and then down a little ways. A lot of great um, image-based lighting uh, HDRs here. But down a little ways, there is a collection of um, HDRI lights. And these actually come with a model that goes with them. Um, but for all for our purposes here, I didn't really need the model, so I just took out the actual EXR files and put them in there. Now, if you go to paint and you need some extra images or you need images in there that aren't in the stock library, all you have to do is choose here under assets. Um, you can click add path if you don't have these here. And then you can just point it at the folder. This light images folder will be in uh, the downloadable file. And you can put it anywhere, but you point the point this file browser at that and then you'll have another uh, group of images. So I'm gonna use, let's put the synthetic area light. This is like an LED array. And all I'm gonna do is click here, just click off the view. And I want this to be kind of up into the back. So I'll scale it down a little bit move it into position. And for this case, I want to turn off repeat because I only want it to paint here. I don't want it to keep tiling over and over and over. So I turn off repeat, leave on pixel blending, that's fine. And now I can just get my brush and paint on this. And it's going to give me some illumination. Now you can see I'm getting this, uh, you know, casting across the backdrop. And then let's see, let's scale this down. I'm going to make it a little bit brighter in the center. Not that really an array of LEDs would do that, but you know that's one of the beauties of being able to customize your lighting uh, in this way is that you get full control over it in a way that you wouldn't otherwise. Now, as a, as a side note here, you could also go in here and you know let's change our color, let's give it a little bit of um, a little bit of warmth, and all I'm going to do is put this around the edges, so it's kind of warming up the edges. And then you can do that. So you get a lot of control and, and flexibility um, over this. And by painting through images, it will allow you to get more control as well. Now you can also use non high dynamic range images uh, with Image Ink. Just remember that it's going to paint through. And just like when we made the initial uh, paint stroke at 100%, it really didn't cast much light. So you want to add on more and more to it. Um, sometimes it can blow out details. Um, and you don't want to do it over an entire space if you have, say, ground and sky in an image. Um, you want to make sure that you add more over the sky so that you get more contrast between the sky and the ground because the light is coming from the sky. Um, all right, and that uh, that pretty much does it for just the basic idea here. And uh, just a couple of other things that I wanted to mention uh, that might make your life a little easier as you work on this. Uh, first thing is going to be that, uh, you know, setting this up is fine, but you may want to adjust the orientation. Um, and you can do that really quickly, actually. Let's go over to the setup tab here. And I'm going to pause this to make sure it doesn't try to render on me. So now I need to go over to the items list. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the uh, the orientation of this sphere. So it's Y orientation, it's rotation around the center. And I'm going to tie that into my environment. All right, because one is on, an, is on a UV map and the other is on um, a spherical map, but you can still tie the object to the spherical map. Okay, so that's pretty simple. All I need to do is go to the uh, small enviro is the name of the item there. And we'll go to our Y rotation. I'm just going to drag it down into my schematic view here then open it up. See, there's our Y rotation. Now I'm going to go over to the shading groups and let's go to the painted image that's inside of the environment. And same thing, I'll go to texture locator, get my Y orientation. And then all I have to do is plug Y orientation here into, oops, and I grabbed scale. So <laughs> let's go ahead and grab the right one here. Y orientation, there we go. Uh, so there's our rotation. Let's plug rotation Y into rotation Y. And now if we take this, let's go ahead and unpause our render here. And now if I take this and rotate it, let's get to a perspective view so I can see this a little bit better. So if I take this and rotate it, you can see that my lighting will rotate with the image. All right. 
Cool. And now another thing to keep in mind here is that you can do this in layers as well. If you find that uh, to be something that works better for you, if you want to work on maybe one bank of lights uh, versus another and you want to separate them out, you can do that. All you would need to do is layer on other images. So I could create another image here, make sure that I set the blend mode to add because we want to add any brightness that's in the in the upper layers to the lightness that's underneath them. And then you do the same thing, duplicate it, put it down here, and then you can control individual layers. Now, just something to keep in mind here is that if you set this up with multiple layers here, um, your orientation is going to be based, it's going to be a gang orientation. You're going to orient all of the pieces uh, together because you're going to be rotating the entire sphere. Um, and you, when you rotate the entire sphere, you're going to rotate all of the attached images. So you won't be able to rotate one image at a time, but you can very easily go in and erase uh, the paint that you did on one layer and then go and move it into a different spot. And that will allow you a little bit more flexibility. But for the most part, as I've done this, I've found that I've had very little problems um, actually just painting on a single image uh, to get any details. So one last note before we uh, wrap this one up is I want to uh, look at what happens when we paint uh, something that we want visible in the background. So right now I have this backdrop and you can see it in the background uh, so we don't see the environment image at all. But if we want to hide this and actually see the environment, you know, maybe you, you want to see some of the lights and get some, uh, some bokeh or something like that, uh, you can do that. So let's go ahead and hide our backdrop here. All right, so now we see the actual background. Right now it's black. Now one thing to note here is if I take this object here and let's go ahead and flip the polygons around so that we're looking at the inside and let's actually hop back to our paint tab as well uh, so now we're looking at the inside now if i go to the camera view here uh, you can see that right now we're actually seeing this led array in the view but it doesn't show up in the background now the reason for that is that this is really just a representation remember the the environment is infinitely far away so if we take this uh, environment sphere and i'm going to use the scale tool just scale it up really, 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 really big. And you'll see it'll slow down as you scale it up, okay, to where it kind of stops scaling. If you make it pretty big, this should work. So right now I'm at like 18,000% scale. You know, it's really big now, great. So if you want to be able to actually paint this from the, uh, from the inside, you know, paint something visible, you may want to scale it up like this. So now if I drop the tool and let's go back here, I'm going to get my paintbrush. Uh, or rather my airbrush, and I don't want image ink or anything on this time. I'm going to set my uh, my opacity up to 100%, and then let's just set the color to white. So if I were to take this, and now if I paint in here, I'm actually going to see this is going to be a closer to a one-to-one -one representation. So if I click right here and make a dot, you see that dot pretty much shows up right there. Okay, so now I can go here, and if I wanted to make some little kind of speckled out of focus um, little dots of things here. You know, these are not going to contribute a lot to the lighting. They will contribute a bit to reflection. Uh, and then mostly they could just be used you know, if you want a little bit of interest in the background. So um, let me also go here. Let me change this to normal and go to black. And, you know, maybe I want to hollow this one out a little bit. There you go. And you can kind of see you get that little ring that looks cool. Um, yeah. So anyways, you can use this, be creative. Um, you know, you can get some nice little bokeh effects by uh, painting a little bit in the background. Just remember, you got to scale the whole thing out so that you get more of a one-to-one -one representation. Now you can see that this little dot I put here is showing up in the proper place on the headphones. And of course, you can always bring your backdrop back and render it that way as well. But this gives you a lot more uh, a lot easier way of getting organic and quickly adaptable lighting um, inside of your moto scenes that allow you to um, highlight and accentuate your model uh, fairly easily without a lot of uh, difficulty. It's a good experimental way uh, to to work with your lighting so that you can very quickly say light here, oh nope, hit undo, light here, and it's just by pacing, placing some paint on top of your canvas that then applies through to the environment. Um, Hope you like this. Hope it's helpful. If you like this video and videos like it, please make sure to check out my uh, Patreon account. That's patreon.com slash Ellery. If you'd like this episode or any other episode with Moto with Ellery a la carte, or they're also available in packages if you want to buy them uh, in bigger groups, you can check those out on Gumroad. That's gumroad.com slash Ellery. Um, also stay tuned because there are going to be uh, some other cool new features coming up for Patreon and Gumroad uh, subscribers um, that will be coming in the next uh, few days. So keep an eye out on, on Twitter and on Facebook for those announcements. I hope this was helpful. Now go make something cool, and I'll see you in the next episode.